So when you get here, you're supposed to call this guy Brother House. Yeah. And he's quoting, you know, um, Bible standards, or at least his interpretation. I, I would argue a misinterpretation of the Bible. He's arguing them as social normative behavior with you guys. So, like, are they having you guys go to church? Are you being forced to participate in any of their religious stuff? We were forced to go to church. We were forced to read the Bible. You had to be saved. Um, uh, basically, if you didn't get saved, you wouldn't have gone up those shirt colors. Um, you, uh, the one thing about this place, you, you had to do what you needed to do to go through the program. Um, cause if you didn't, if you didn't, if you didn't keep a smile on your face and just pretend everything is okay, then, and you were miserable and stuff like that, you would just go down the shirt colors and you'd get treated like crap. I'm sorry if I'm not allowed to say that word. Um. Oh, you're allowed to cuss, you're allowed to cuss on here. Okay. You're good. You're good. You know, I was raised Catholic. Yeah. Um, I went to parochial school and whatnot. Um, and obviously there's Jews, Muslims, Hindus, like a, a rainbow of religious and spiritual persuasions. So are you forced to conform? Like, were you supposed to become more Baptist than Catholic? Was there a distinction there with denominations? Because yeah. it's sounding a little bit like religious abuse yes, here. Yes, definitely. He didn't, he, all the other religions were um, like against their religion, basically. So they were all going to hell. The only way that you could get saved was by Jesus Christ at the Baptist church. Um, and that's the only way that you're going to heaven. And they feel like they made fun of like Jehovah Witnesses. And I remember him bringing them up several other times. That's how I knew about the other religions because he used to say them to us and make fun of them and say they're not, they're not, um, they're not uh, going, they're not going to heaven because they're not getting saved right and they're not baptized right. Well, speaking of that baptism, uh, were they performing baptism or, or having any of the girls get baptized while at Circle of Hope? Did you witness yeah, that? Yeah, I, I got, I did, got baptized. Um, I, yeah, wow, okay. I got baptized. I, I went to Berean Baptist Church in um, Springfield, Missouri. And um, yeah, that's when supposedly I got saved by Jesus Christ and then I got baptized afterwards as well. At what point in your stay at Circle of Hope, I'm assuming that, uh, I don't know how you're, how you played the program and, and I'd really like you to let us know and, and take us on that journey. But at what point did they convince you that you needed to get baptized in order for this to, you know, get a little bit more sustainable for you as an experience? Well, because, um, because when I was younger, my mom and dad split up. I went on a bit of a, a crazy uh, like a crazy teenage thing, like every teenager does, really. You know what I mean? Um, I went a bit crazy. I started getting involved with drugs and alcohol and running away and stuff like that. Brother House used to use that as my fault, even though I was just a teenager, just trying to lash out in a way, if you know what I mean, because I was just so broken inside when my mum and dad split up. Um, he just used that as against me, all my wrongdoings, and making me say that you're not gonna, you're not, you're not, you're going to hell. And this is what, and when someone's putting that in your head so many times, you're going to hell, you're going to hell. If you don't get saved by Jesus Christ, do you know what I mean? It, it just pushes you towards that. Um, when someone just kept, keep, you know, if you, does that make any sense? If does that make any sense? Does yeah. Make... Well, I'm. This is all brainwashing, and this is all coercion. I'm just, I'm really wondering. Was there a point where you genuinely believed him that you might be going to hell? I believe at some one point, yes, because I was so brainwashed. Um, I thought I was going to go to hell. I thought that I did believe that there was a um, a God. I, to this day, I don't know. I believe there is a God, or maybe there might be a God. I don't know. I, I, it's still it's like the unknown, isn't it? And when I was in that program, because you're around that all the time and that's all you see, you don't see nothing else. All you're allowed to do is listen to Jesus music. When um, you've been in that environment for so long, I was there for four years, you know what I mean? So when something's been put in, into your head for so long and you've got, um, you're going to church and everything is about God, obviously you're going to start believing it and being brainwashed by it. Yeah, I mean, it makes total sense. And I think that's something that's very, I'm glad that you have an understanding and you can accept 
the brainwashing that you went through yeah, definitely. and recognize it as such, you know, um, because I think a lot of us uh, spend a really long time not addressing that. I'm just, I'm really horrified for teenage Chanel that she was put in a position where even if for a moment that she believed whether there is a God or not, but that, that she did believe that there was a God and that her relationship with that creator was one that he wanted to damn you to hell. Mm, definitely. That's not fair. That's, um, and I feel like the effects that that could have on you and your spirituality and your relationship with a higher power, if you chose to have one, that those, that those like that, I didn't understand religious abuse until recently. I still don't fully understand it. But I think that this is a pretty good example of that. Yeah, definitely. It's um, I don't, it's just it's really hard to explain when sometimes when it goes on to your head because it's just it, you don't realise at the time what, when it's happening. But when I look back on it now, it's just it's just it, I just can't believe someone could do that to someone. You know what I mean? I just I don't understand how she he could do that to those girls. You should be your own choice at the end of the day, which religion you want to support. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, and also, I don't think it's appropriate to project our realities on others, regardless of, like, if it's religious yeah. or political or, or whatever the case may be. But here I also find this really offensive where you have this, ki- this brother Boyd guy who is this authoritarian, like, almost a conduit, a middleman between these young, underdeveloped prefrontal cortex teenage minds and their own personal higher power. And the translation that he's giving to these young people is that is not that God is love and God is mercy and forgiveness and all potential, but that God is um, judgmental and uh, controlling and possessive and vengeful. And that is just, uh, that's pretty scary. That's a really scary thing to do to young children. Yes. I totally agree with you. 